Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, of the Russian Federation for his statement. And I now give the floor to His Excellency Salvi Bukadu, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Algeria. Sayyidi Rais, Bismillah rahman rahim Mr. President, in the name of God, uh, the Beneficent, uh, the Merciful, let me begin by congratulating Professor Dijani Bande and thanking Ms. Maria Fernandez Espinosa for her presidency of the General Assembly during the previous session. Mr. President, the issue of the eradication of poverty, high quality education, and the fight against climate change and cohesion are all issues that will be discussed and elements which are at the focus of the objectives we adopted four years ago. There are interconnected causes which directly affect sustainable development both for individuals and for society. Despite the achievements in the framework of poverty eradication, as uh, is demonstrated in the various reports of this organization and its specialized agencies, a, there is a lot that remains to be done, especially in low-income countries, in order to respond to these challenges and to meet uh, the sustainable development goals of the 2030 Agenda. The annual meeting of the General Assembly is a timely opportunity to assess the current situation. Is today's world better than it was during the previous session? Are we living in a safer, fairer world? What kind of world are we going to live to our children leave to our children? What are we going to do in order to put an end to the ongoing attacks on nature? All of these issues call on us uh, to focus on uh, the inevitable meaning of our presence here. And it also reminds us of the essential principles on which the United Nations were based, a world uh, founded on unity and solidarity. Algeria confirms its commitment to act uh, within the, the framework of a world of peaceful coexistence, especially in our region and in our immediate neighborhood, a world of multilateralism, where multilateralism is the best way for the realization of the aspirations of our people and the creation of a world that we want to see safer, uh, with greater solidarity, and with greater respect for nature. Humanity has reached an unprecedented level of economic development, prosperity, and technological development. However, these are nothing but figures because, in reality, millions of humans live in poverty and need, which are a constant source of concern. Over 740 million people live on less than $2 a day. These people are concentrated above all in rural areas. This raises the issue of balanced development. The fight against poverty is not confined to charity. It is an issue of social justice, of peace, and of stability for the entire world. Mr. President, Sustainable development makes it possible to respond to today's needs without damaging the resources or the future uh, of uh, the coming generations. By adopting wise, rational economic systems and cooperative governance, we take into account uh, the safety of the environment. The sustainable nature of development is connected to the alignment of policies 
which follow the need of safeguarding the environment. This imposes a need uh, to fight against climate change, uh, which uh, every day shows a greater influence uh, on uh, the natural environment and which uh, feeds uh, natural disasters which are connected to it. The Sahel and the Sahara regions to which my country belongs is one of the areas on the, on the African continent which is most heavily affected by these phenomena. Indeed, the escalation of the phenomena of uh, desertification and uh, drought uh, even uh, though Africa is the continent uh, emitting the lowest uh, uh, amount of greenhouse uh, gases, it is also that which is uh, the continent which is least equipped uh, to fight climate change. Financial and technical assistance must be provided in sufficient amounts and aligned uh, with the needs of the uh, least polluting countries in order to put an end uh, to this. Uh, environmental divergence between developing and uh, developed countries. The achievement uh, of uh, the goals set by the international community depends on the degree in which uh, each country takes its responsibility in correspondence with its national abilities. Today, we are working on promoting and consolidating the principles of multilateralism and safeguarding multilateralism from uh, anything that might weaken it. This can only be done internationally uh, in uh, terms of an ongoing multilateralism based on justice, uh, fairness, and uh, striking a balance between the interests of developed and developing countries. Mr. President, the challenges of a multilateral world are closely linked uh, to the issues of the reform of the United Nations, which is of the greatest importance. The mechanisms of the organization based uh, on uh, pre-World War II uh, balances are no longer effective when it comes to the new composition of the international community or to responding to the challenges of our time. Thus, uh, modernizing and revitalizing the mechanisms uh, and uh, the actions of uh, this organization cannot be postponed since uh, they will have direct effects on uh, peace and security in the world. Throughout uh, recent uh, decades, the policy of uh, double standards and impunity has had enormous impact on the moral authority of the multilateral system as well as a respect uh, for the flag of the United Nations, no matter where it may be displayed. Uh, it shows uh, the pressing need for a legitimate well-founded reform. The renewed uh, reform of our organization confirms the pivotal role of the General Assembly of the United Nations, as well as uh, the need to democratize the Security Council. The framework uh, for the reform of the Security Council created by the African Union is uh, worth considering, and Algeria is uh, fully available to actively contribute uh, to the realization of this process. Algeria is also uh, willing uh, to contribute uh, to the progress expected in the areas of disarmament uh, and uh, connected multilateral initiatives, including uh, the disarmament conference, uh, the chair of which uh, we are to take during the coming year, 2020. The Arab region is still suffering from long-term and emerging uh, challenges, which are worsened by the failure of the international community to take an appropriate uh, focus to settle this, uh, these crises in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations and international law. And all of this has fed the phenomenon of violent extremism. At the heart uh, of the Arab world, 
and for all lovers of peace uh, throughout the world, the issue of Palestine is a central question which is closely linked to many other crises as well as regional security in the Middle East and security in the entire world. Despite the adoption of a number of resolutions, binding resolutions by our organization and constructive work, these resolutions have not been implemented on the ground, which uh, um, pushes the horizon for settling the Middle Eastern problem in accordance with international law further and further away. Even though the majority of the international community condemns the excesses of the Israeli occupation, and uh, despite uh, this uh, long-term, histo uh, long-standing historical injustice, uh, the Palestinian people, the innocent Palestinian people, continue to be deprived of their most uh, basic elementary rights, including the right to return uh, to their homeland. To this is added, of course, uh, attempts uh, to change, uh, to move uh, the capital away uh, from Al-Quds Al-Sharif. And we have uh, uh, continued uh, to respond uh, by working on uh, the building of uh, the Maghreb uh, coalition, which uh, was launched uh, by Algeria three decades ago. My country, Algeria, is uh, fully willing to translate uh, these objectives to which our people aspire into reality on the ground. Nevertheless, I wish to reiterate our regret when faced with the non-realization of the dynamic expected by the Secretary General on the front of the Western Sahara. We also regret that Mr. Kohler, his special envoy, resigned. We hope that there will be be peace uh, reigning between our brothers in the Kingdom of Morocco and the Polisario Front so that the Sahrawi people will be able to uh, exercise uh, their legitimate right uh, to self-determination in accordance with the Charter of the General Assembly and General Assembly and Security Council resolutions. Turning to Libya, Algeria has repeatedly warned uh, about the obstacles to a uh, political solution of this crisis. We have always confirmed uh, to the various Libyan parties and uh, to regional and international uh, um, stakeholders that the highest interests of the nation must overrule any other consideration. We have stood uh, uh, side by side with them to give the necessary legitimacy to our call for dialogue to emerge from this crisis and begin a process of reconciliation removed from any uh, process of foreign interference which only served to threaten the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Libya as, long as, as well as the stability of its society. Algeria reaffirms that uh, the Libyan crisis can only be settled by Libya itself and the neighboring countries, and that the path of weapons and foreign intervention cannot be appropriate when it comes to reaching a settlement. When it comes to Syria, in recent days, we have seen uh, many positive developments. Security has been restored to a number of regions. Terrorist groups uh, have uh, lost uh, a lot of ground. This has made it possible uh, for the return of a first wave of uh, people displaced uh, from both uh, inside and outside Syria. Uh, progress must now be made in terms of uh, peace and national reconciliation to make it possible for all Syrians to return home. And uh, the Arab world cannot uh, forget its kindred country of uh, Yemen, where there have been dire effects on human life and, and the humanitarian 
situation. We hope uh, that uh, dialogue will prevail in terms of respect for uh, uh, for national integrity. We hope that the fight against terrorism will continue and uh, uh, that uh, it will be possible to respond to, to these unacceptable attacks. Uh, and I pay tribute uh, to the efforts of our kindred countries of the region to put an end to the crisis. Mr. President, realizing lasting peace in Mali calls for the effective full implementation of the Peace and Reconciliation Agreement, which was signed in 2015, inspired by the Algiers process. Close cooperation uh, must uh, continue between all signatories to the peace agreement. We pay tribute to progress made on this front. However, it must be admitted that a lot remains to be done by all Malian stakeholders. Algeria, as president, as chair of uh, the follow-up uh, mechanism of this agreement, reaffirms its determination to support uh, Malian parties to put an end to this crisis and uh, to focus uh, on the fundamental uh, reasons for this. We are uh, supportive of uh, the territorial integrity uh, and sovereignty of Mali. The lack of security in the Sahel region is uh, something which only feeds the growth of terrorist groups and increases uh, their destructive capacity. They make the most of a criminal economy which is based on all kinds of trafficking and uh, which has found a fertile soil in the poverty of this region and has made it possible to recruit uh, numbers of young people into their ranks. On the basis of our geographic position and our long-standing experience of the fight against, in the fight against terrorism and extremism in our territory, and since uh, we are uh, also an essential pillar of stability uh, in Africa and the Mediterranean, Algeria has a comprehensive policy to fight uh, these international scourges relentlessly. and. As a parallel track, uh, we try to conduct uh, far-reaching reforms in all areas, economic, uh, social, cultural, and above all, religious. The mistaken uh, interpretation uh, of uh, religious convictions, uh, which Islam in particular suffers for, has affected the stability of societies and the uh, Arab and Muslim world, uh, on the one hand, uh, and uh, has uh, also led uh, to an increase of hatred against uh, Islam and uh, the Muslim diaspora throughout the world. We must respond uh, through continuous cooperative action based on mutual uh, respect uh, and understanding. And uh, national le legislations must also be adapted in order to respond to this threat. The issue of migration also calls for a close focus. Uh, respecting uh, human dignity must be the basis of all policies when it comes to organizing the phenomenon of migration. And uh, to organize migration from the, from the point of view uh, of a balanced uh, global framework which takes into account the countries of origin, of uh, transit, and of uh, des and the destination countries, as well as considering the fundamental causes of these phenomena. In recent years, we have put particular stress on the security and humanitarian aspects of migration. However, the development aspect has not really taken the place it deserves. Uh, the promises and advocacy of a public uh, of official development aid must be translated into tangible programs which respond to the specific needs of local societies and which can prevent uh, migration unfortunately the mediterranean has become an enormous uh, watery grave for migrants who uh, attempt uh, to reach uh, europe is it not time for the Mediterranean 
to recover its space, its uh, true space, uh, which is that of cooperation and solidarity. We trust in Algeria this will happen, and we will positively contribute with our part to our partners on both sides of the Mediterranean to any effort uh, towards this objective. Allow me to conclude, Mr. President, by saying that Algeria is a state which is deeply convinced and deeply believes in the principles of the United Nations and multilateralism and the principles of peace and mutual respect. Algeria wishes to build relations based on solidarity and stability. We Algerians aspire today to develop uh, our country and to keep it strong so that uh, we will be able to continue its quest for peace, security, and peaceful coexistence in its geographical space in the Sahel region, in the Mediterranean, in Africa, and in the entire world. Thank you very much, sir. I thank His Excellency Sabri Bukadum, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Algeria. I thank